Hi everyone, welcome back to the Casual Watch Review channel. The year 2020, it's certainly been an interesting year so far, I think is an underestimation. The other thing with 2020 is I've been sent a lot of micro brands, which I'm really intrigued by. I think it's awesome that these, you know, one or two passionate watch um, fans will create their own watch brand. And this watch is certainly from a passionate watch collector. I've had the pleasure of speaking to him uh, a few times. And also I previously reviewed his homage to the Citizen Bullhead Chronograph. I'll leave a link to that in the comment section down below. This one is one of Detroit Mint's earlier watches. And it's a real love letter to Seiko. It's taking that classic 6105 early turtle styling and it's really upgrading it for a modern age and making it very affordable. Let's flip the camera around, we'll do a full review and then let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. So here we have the Detroit Mint Islander, it's called. Clearly we can see from here, it takes a lot of inspiration from those vintage Seiko 6105s. The case shape, very similar. The, also the way that the dial is laid out, hands very similar as well. These are currently retailing for $200. So if you like that Seiko look and also supporting a US uh, business, then you could certainly look at this as a great option. We've got this slightly off-centered case here with this cut out notch to shroud the crown here. Crown's in the same position as you would see on one of them vintage models. Dial layout and the hands definitely harken back to those vintage Seiko. But you're getting a lot of bang for your buck really. You're getting that vintage styling 316L stainless steel. You've got the dial with those applied indices and we'll get a close up on that shortly. You've got a transparent case back. It's using the NH35A movement, favorite of micro brands. So we have hacking, hand winding in there as well. These can be regulated. There's no sort of embellishment on the rotor here. It's just the standard uh, rotor that comes on the NH35A movement. But we've got transparent case back. We, we have a mineral crystal on here with an anti-reflective coating. The bezel with its uh, aluminium insert on here. The mineral crystal has a slight beveling to it, which we'll look at on the close-up. But for $200, you're getting a lot of watch for the money, I think. And I just love this vintage style. This dial combination that I've gone with, this is a, a white dial. It's a pearlescent effect to the dial. But there's different dial combinations. There's certainly a, a black dial version as well, which would really look like that um, vintage 6105. Let's just look at the overall measurements. So we've got a 44 millimeter case that's from the nine to the three o'clock position, 47 millimeters from lug to lug, and then a thickness of around 13 millimeters. So it's nicely proportioned, the watch. Also with the, the shorter lugs here as well. Now the lugs on here are 20 millimeters, which different than the newer Seikos like the updated turtle for example that has a, a 22 millimeter lug width zooming in on the dial now i just wanted to do a quick comparison this is a my turtle my modern turtle although the hands have been changed and then this is the 6105 grandfather of the turtle but that's been reimagined by detroit mint here one thing i wanted to show you as well just to compare the two of them together is the bezel on here on the Detroit Mint version, it's got a real nice coin edge bezel to it. Uh, the reason it's called coin edge bezel for anyone that doesn't know is it has a ridge that's similar to a coin, like a quarter or something along those lines. Whereas the, we can see here the Seiko bezel has a, a kind of a ridge down the center. Now Seiko have reissued the 6105, but it's in the many thousands. I think it's around the four five thousand dollar mark. So to get a watch that looks similar for $200, but that has Dave's unique spin on it, it's not an exact copy of the 6105. It's inspired by the 6105. Got a, a aluminium insert for the bezel. Nice action, very precise. No play in that bezel whatsoever. 
everything lines up as it should. One of the things that I did notice is on the, the re-halt here, it doesn't have any markings. What that gives by having the black re-halt is it gives a lot of depth to the dial. The combination I went for is this white dial, or I think it's a pearlescent dial. I think it gives it a nice contrast between the bezel, got the black re-halt, and then the white dial. When we zoom in here, you'll see those raised indices, those applied indices. Also, there's a raising around the date window, a framing around the date window. It gives a lot of 3D depth to the dial, I think. And then you've got this kind of pearlescent that shimmers in the light, the dial. Flipping around the back now, we can see the transparent case back. This is also mineral crystal, and then we have the various markings all stainless steel 200 meters water resistance detroit mint written around there in that kind of old english font i would call it similar to the font that's on the dial and on the markings at the bottom here i know certainly in his recent kickstarter and if you're not familiar i recently reviewed one of his new uh, citizen bullhead chronograph homages uh, I know for that he actually changed the logo for that particular model because that was more 70s inspired and he added that to the Kickstarter with a redesign but this one has the old English font on it. It's certainly distinctive to the Detroit Mint family of watches. Dave who runs Detroit Mint is based in Detroit and he assembles these watches in Detroit although the parts come from various different parts of the world obviously there's a Japanese movement on here as well but all of the design final finishing and assembly is done in Detroit on this particular model. <clears throat> Here we have it on the wrist. Mine is a 7.5 inch wrist. Extremely comfortable. Uh, short lugs so they fit, it hugs my wrist here. There's actually two keepers on here so let me move that one up so it doesn't look like it's overhanging. A very comfortable wear. It's lighter than it looks as well and that 20 millimeter lug width you could easily put it on a NATO strap if you wanted to as well. It's a lot of watch for the money, really, for, for $200. If you like the look of these vintage Seiko watches, you can't afford either a vintage one, because the vintage ones are quite expensive as this, or the Seiko reissue, then I think this is certainly a good option. Also, of course, assembled in Detroit, assembled in the US, so you'd be supporting a, a US business. I, I like the offset crown on here. Very easy to wind. That NH35A movement, very reliable. Not only are they reliable, but any watchmaker can easily replace one of these movements out. We've even, uh, Chris and I, who I do the podcast with, we've even replaced one of these movements in my turtle. So in summary here, I, I think a lot of watch for the money, really. This is one of those watches that you really think, why doesn't Seiko make a $200 affordable homage to their vintage watches. If Dave at Detroit Mint, who's an independent watchmaker, he designs the watches himself, he has them made all out of his own money. He's not a, you know, he's not a big watch manufacturer by any means. He's a passionate watch collector. If he can make one of these for a very reasonable price, $200, I just don't understand why Seiko has to reissue their vintage watches and make them in the many of thousands of dollars. They could easily make one similar to this. I mean, obviously, hopefully hopefully for Dave, they don't because this is, a, you know, obviously he wants to sell sell these his own watches, but it really it really shows what, what can be done. And Seiko, with its economies of scale, there's absolutely no reason why they couldn't um, start reissuing these as well. But for the time being, thankfully for Detroit Mint, they have got this uh, vintage model. I'll leave a link to the website down below. I've spoke to Dave a couple of times, probably one of the most passionate watchmakers that I have spoke to. Um, very passionate about watches, very passionate about vintage Seiko models. He's always thinking, he's always creating new models. Uh, he did that Citizen Bullhead chronograph that I recently did an upload on based on the watch from once upon a time in hollywood so definitely check that out anyway guys that was my review of the watch as always i like to know what you guys think so let me know in the comment section down below if this is your first time watching one of my videos i would love it if you subscribed and hit that thumbs up really helps the channel we have a podcast me and my friend chris we do a watch podcast once a week longer form content and also there's a new facebook group 
So put in a request to join that Facebook group and we can continue the conversation over there. As always, really appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time on the Casual Watch View channel. Thanks guys, bye.